Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Worship in God's House this morning. What a blessing to have you with us and a special welcome to our visitors today as well. Just a couple of announcements. As you know, we're coming to the end of the church year. It also means it's Thanksgiving time too. So we're going to have a Thanksgiving service here at 7 o'clock this Wednesday evening. And by the way, there will be a Thanksgiving dinner prior to that from 4.30 to 6.30. Um, and, and I think we could almost open it up to anybody if you would just let me know that you're coming. I think there's going to be plenty of food. We've got some turkeys and some ham and mashed potatoes and dressing and all that, pies. There will also be pie afterwards, too, for those who don't make it to the dinner. But if you know of certain people, maybe neighbors or friends that you would like to invite, uh, this would be a great time for them to get to know our church. It'll be held here in the fellowship hall from 4.30 to 6.30 prior to the service with the service at 7 o'clock. Also, we are about to enter the Advent season, a new year in the, in the church. And there will be midweek Advent services for the next four Wednesdays after Thanksgiving. So just maybe think in your calendar too, if you're able, at 7 o'clock for the next five Wednesdays, there will be worship here, along with our Sunday morning worship as well, as we prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of Jesus, both in the crib at Bethlehem and also on the last day when he comes again to take us home to heaven. We're also preparing for Christmas for Kids that will be held on December 3rd. That's a Saturday from 10 until noon. Thank you to those who are helping to prepare for this one day vacation Bible school for kids centering around the Christmas story. There will be music, there will be the Christmas story, uh, there will be crafts and cookies for the kids as well. Uh, maybe you saw the sign, in fact, I can almost see it from here uh, at the circle. There is a sign there advertising this. Also, uh, thanks to Mike Lines for putting it on our website, uh, Facebook, I believe, too. Uh, and you can sign up online or you can let us know if you'd like your kids to come to that, too. Finally, if, if you would, if you have kids who might be here for uh, the Christmas Eve service, please let me know so that we can have the program ready to go for them. Uh, and they're going to have narrations and uh, recitations in that Christmas Eve service. So we will have services at six o'clock Christmas Eve and Christmas Day at 9.30, which falls on a Sunday. I know I threw a lot of dates at you, but you can look at your worship folder and you can find those dates as well. Also, you probably have the e-news too and you can check it out there too. I believe that's all the announcements for this morning. Uh, Jacqueline? Saying Amherst of Government is having bingo tomorrow night from 6 to 7. So please talk to me after the service. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, uh, any other announcements this morning? So here is the last Sunday of the church year. Jesus says, watch and wait for me. How do we watch and wait for him? It is scripture that produces certainty while his saints wait for his coming. God bless our worship this morning. We begin with a new hymn, and uh, if you would like to just listen, you're welcome to. It points us to our last day and the last day when Jesus comes again.
sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship, 
worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we invite the children forward for a children's devotion at this time. Good morning, kids. Great to see you here. I've got something wrinkly in my pocket this morning. Raise your hand if you know what this might be. Anybody know what that is? Lily? A receipt, yeah. If you go and buy groceries, you might get one of these receipts. I have a receipt here, and it says on it that, I, that a person bought some turkey and some ham and mashed potatoes and rolls, some pie as well. What do you think that person's doing? Yeah, that's right. They're getting ready for Thanksgiving. Sometimes we get ready for Thanksgiving because we're waiting for somebody to come. Maybe a lot of special people like grandpas and grandmas or maybe cousins. I always look forward to getting together with my cousins because 
it meant a lot of fun playtime too. You know what? There's a special day that Jesus wants us to get ready for. It's when he comes again to take us home to heaven. Now how do we get ready for Jesus coming? Does Jesus want us to bake a lot of pies and make some turkeys and ham for him when he comes? Jesus doesn't need those things, does he? No. Jesus says, prepare for my coming as you listen to my word. That's how we get prepared. Because through God's word in the Bible, God gives us faith and love in our hearts. Because the Bible tells us about Jesus and it tells us how much he loves us. You know one thing? Jesus could take all our sins and he could say, okay, you did this, 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 and this bad thing. Kind of like a receipt that lists all your sins. And then he could say to us, you're guilty. You deserve punishment. Is that what Jesus does? No. Let me show you that receipt again. Pretend that it shows us all our sins. You know what Jesus does with that receipt? With all our sins on it, he says, he's taken them all away. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed your sins from you. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for you. That makes us want to get ready for Jesus coming. Because that's not going to be a scary day. It's going to be a great day. A day filled with joy that will last forever. So let us look forward to that time when Jesus comes again. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for making us your children. And thank you for giving us waiting and watching hearts. Oh, how we look forward to that day when you will come to rescue us. For then all our tears will be dried. All our joys will last forever and ever. And we will be with you and all the loved ones who have died in the Lord with you. Thank you for that joy. And may that joy continue to last until you take us home to heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening this morning. Our first reading from God's Word this morning comes from the prophet Habakkuk, who was waiting for the Lord to come. And the Lord gave him a promise that he would come again, that God would accomplish what he had promised to do. They were written down by Habakkuk. The prophecy that Habakkuk, the prophet, received, How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me, there is strife and conflict abounds. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time, it speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you to join in the singing of Psalm 130. <clears throat>
we have cried to our God. He has heard your voice and he has promised to come on the last day. We wait expectantly for him. From the book of Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter of the Bible, beginning with verse six. The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I heard and, and seen them, when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this scroll because the time is near. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right and let the holy person continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We invite you to please stand for the gospel reading. Jesus urges us to be ready for his coming at all times. From Luke chapter 12, beginning with verse 35, this will also serve as our sermon text for this morning. Jesus says this, Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour 
when you do not expect him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing a hymn that reminds us of Jesus' second coming, how we joyfully look forward to that day. God's word this morning, we turn to our gospel reading from Luke chapter 12, where we read verses 35 through 40. 
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, I am leaving. But I'm coming back. How do you feel when dear loved ones come to your house at a time of joy, like at Thanksgiving or Christmas, and you're enjoying their company? Maybe you haven't seen them for a long, long time. You enjoy that time with them, but the day comes when they leave. And maybe you're standing at the edge of your driveway, waving as they drive off, and maybe with a tear in your eye, you're wishing that they were still there. You're hoping that they will come back. In our gospel reading today, Jesus was preparing his disciples, his loved ones, for that day when he was going to leave them visibly. He was going to ascend into heaven, but he wanted them to be prepared for that day. <clears throat> Jesus was going to ascend into heaven because he had won the victory, because the jubilation of heaven awaited him. He would be with the Father, victorious over the devil, victorious over death itself. And that would be kind of a sad day for the disciples to know that they could not see Jesus anymore. So what did Jesus want his disciples to do when he would visibly leave them? Jesus says to them, be ready. Because when I leave, you will know for certain that I will come back. Be ready, Jesus says. Be dressed and ready with your lamps burning. Think about the people back in Jesus' time. What did they often dress in? They, they dressed in robes, maybe something like mine. <laughs> robes have a reason. They, they, you, they can be worn, but there is some disadvantage to them too. If you want to move quickly, if you want to move hastily, it's hard to move in a robe. You might easily trip. The word here in the Greek means be dressed. It means to cinch up the robe, hitch it up so that you can be ready in haste when the master returns. And then he said, have your lamps burning. May they be burning brightly when the master returns. Jesus was teaching a parable here. He was reminding his disciples that he was going to heaven to that wedding banquet, that jubilation there in heaven, but he was going to return. And when he returns, he wanted them to be ready to be prepared with their hitched up robes, with their lamps burning brightly, ready to serve him, ready to open the door to him when he comes to take them to that wedding banquet. He wants you and I, even right now, to be watching and waiting for him. Jesus says that word watching or waiting in our text several times, doesn't he? He wants us to wait expectantly for him. But you may have the question in your mind, what does that mean? Does Jesus want me to be staring up into the heavens 24 hours a day, watching and waiting for him? Is that his purpose in saying, you, my servant, you ought to be watching, you ought to be waiting? Jesus says, be watching and waiting with faith burning brightly in your hearts for me. You see, sometimes it's easy for us with our sinful nature to become sleepy in our faith. Maybe we've lived several decades on this earth and we thought many times, well, maybe Jesus is gonna to come today. Well, maybe he's gonna come next week. And then we become complacent, we become lazy, and we stop thinking, well, maybe Jesus isn't gonna come for a long, long time yet. 
and we become complacent in our watching and waiting for him. We sometimes are tempted not to be dressed, not having the lamps of faith burning brightly in our hearts. We always think to ourselves, we've got more time. Jesus isn't coming for a long time yet. I can be lazy, I can be complacent. I've got a lot of more things on my plate that I've got to take care of yet. But Jesus says, be ready for me at any time. You don't know when Jesus is coming again. Jesus, he says, will come like a thief. Isn't that an interesting comparison of who Jesus is? He's a thief. He's like a thief who could come in the middle of the night. You see, you and I can't stay up all night watching for thieves come to our door, so a lot of people these days, you know what they do? They have the ring doorbell, and that ring doorbell might help to keep an eye on what's going on. Some people actually have an alarm in their house in case a thief breaks in. You and I might have Jesus come in one of the later watches of the night. Oh. He might come when people least expect him. So when is the time for us to be lazy and not looking for Jesus? Jesus says, never. Always be ready for him. He could come at any moment. So how will we be enabled to be ready for his coming? Here's the good news. It isn't all about you and how you try and prepare for his coming. It's all about what he is doing for you and what he continues to do for you. Can I point you back to the words of the prayer of the day, which we just spoke just a few moments ago? We prayed this. Enable us, Lord, to wait for the day of your return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. It is the Lord who enables you. It is the Lord who supplies you with his word, with his life-giving gospel, to prepare you for that day of his coming. There's a lot of people out there who think, Jesus isn't coming. There's a lot of people out there who are thinking, well, if Jesus does come, boy, what a fearful, bad day that's going to be. But you and I know better because we know God's word. When Jesus comes again, it will be a joyful day for us. When Jesus comes again, we will have his word and his promise fulfilled as he has fulfilled his other promises too to us. So continue with faith-filled watching and waiting, with your lamps of faith burning brightly as you remain close to his word, as you grow in that relationship with him. You and I know that the word of God are not just words on a page, they are the life-giving word of God through his Holy Spirit to give you life, to give you faith, to strengthen you in the faith that you already have. You and I do not take for granted this blessed sacrament that we receive today of Jesus' body and blood. In that way, Jesus readies us. He enables us to look expectantly to that day when he will come again. Dear friends, let us be dressed and ready with our lamps burning. Jesus has left, but he will return. And when the master returns to his house, what will happen then? Jesus continues with his parable. Think about it for just a moment. When a master returns to his house usually, and he has servants to open his door, usually what happens is that those servants go to work, maybe pulling up a chair for the master, maybe preparing a nice meal for the master, maybe getting his bed ready for the master, maybe a valet helps to park his car in the garage, doing all these things for their master. But not this time when Jesus comes again. 
Verse 37 is amazing when you read it. Let's look at that again today. It says, truly I tell you, and when Jesus starts out a statement with those words, he means, listen up. This is the heart and core of what I'm telling you. Listen carefully. Jesus says this, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. The question for you is, who is the he? He will dress himself to serve. It isn't the servants. It's the master. It's Jesus. Jesus will dress himself to serve you. Jesus will wait upon you. Isn't this a most remarkable picture that Jesus gives us? We are his servants. What have we done to deserve such treatment that after the master comes back from heaven and the door is open to him, that he would serve us? Dear friends, you and I know that we don't deserve anything from our master. And we know that he comes to serve us because he loves us, because his grace to us is boundless. Isn't this an astounding statement by Jesus? But maybe it doesn't surprise us so much when we remember how gracious and merciful that master has been already to us. You remember how he, the Lord of lords and King of kings, came down from heaven. He stooped down to serve us 2,000 years ago. He stooped down in utter humility to live an impoverished life, to serve others with his miracles, to serve others with his word. He stooped down in utter humility to die upon the cross for our sins. And to add to all of that gracious story of what Jesus has done, Jesus now says in our text today what he will do. That even though he has been exalted, he has been glorified, never to die, never to suffer again, when he comes back in his exaltation as King of kings and Lord of lords, he comes to serve, to serve you and me. Doesn't that give you a whole new perspective when you read Psalm 23? You, Lord, prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You drench my head with oil, my cup overflows. Jesus will come to serve us with his heavenly banquet. While he is judging the unbelievers, he is giving us heaven. That's what Jesus comes to do. He will come to gather his people in heaven forever. The master, our leader, our savior, comes to serve us. So dear friends, what will our reaction be as we await that day? Will we be complacent? Will we say, oh, it's no big deal about reading the word or hearing the word? Will we say, oh, it's Sunday morning and just roll over in bed and think, no big deal? Will we say to that dying neighbor who knows nothing about Jesus or who has no relationship with Jesus, will we just say to them, well, tough luck for them? Will we say about our offerings, well, I guess I'll give Jesus the leftovers. Jesus knows I gotta pay the bills, so, but I'll give him leftovers if there's anything left. Knowing that Jesus comes to serve us with eternity in heaven with him transforms our lives. Dear friends, because Jesus comes to serve us, let, his, let us serve him with the life that he has won for us here and with the assurance that we have eternal life with him coming up when the master returns. 
And while we wait for his return, may we be filled with faith to serve one another in love, to know of the opportunities he gives us to express that Christ-like love to fellow members, to our community, to a world that does not know what you and I know as our lamps burn brightly with the faith that God has given us through his word. You don't know what day Jesus will return, but you do know he will return. And that day will be filled with endless joy. Therefore, watch, wait for him because he comes for you. He comes to serve you. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We invite you to please stand as we join in the confession of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for prayer. We invite you to join in the responsive prayer for the final Sunday of the church year. Lord Jesus Christ, blessed are you, the King who comes to set your people free. Reign over us in your abundant mercy. While we long for your final coming, we rejoice that you lengthen these end times so that many may hear of your saving work and believe. Send your Spirit on us that we may use the gift of time to share our faith with others. Lord and King, defend all who are imprisoned or insulted because of your name. Come to help those whose Christian faith is mocked as foolish or naive, and rescue those who are straying from the faith. Lead us to those who need help. Guide us in our works of service and strengthen us with a firm resolve to follow you in obedience. Lord of the Church, develop in us a new awareness of the gifts you give us to use in our callings, that your kingdom of grace may flourish. Bless and preserve Christian churches everywhere and raise up another generation of faithful workers. Both in humiliation and glory, you extended your loving hand to the weak and the hurting. Speak to those who are confused and wondering. 
Defend those who are oppressed and put down. Comfort those who are enduring pain or struggling with sadness. Lord, keep in your care Eric Atkins, who is now sickened. We pray that you would bless him with recovery and give patience to his mother who is watching out for him. We thank you for watching over Jacqueline Copenhaver as she recently underwent a procedure. Give health and strength to her body and give a strong faith to her heart as she looks to you for comfort and help now and in the days to come. We pray for the Hamilton family stricken with sickness. We pray that you would give them renewed health once again and may they find true comfort and help from you, their Lord and Savior. We pray for our sister, Billy Shirley, who is going through a long recovery after surgery. We pray that you would give relief to her many pains, and may we be a help to her in her time of need. We also thank and praise you for the recovery you are giving to Vincent Valdi following his hip surgery. Watch over this young man, O Lord. You are the great physician of both body and soul. Help Vincent in his time of need. Give recovery according to your will. And may Vincent's faith in you remain firm and strong. We pray for those celebrating birthdays, to Teresa Lorenz, to Katie Grease, and all others. We pray also for Eric Atkins, who celebrates a birthday, his 40th, this coming Wednesday. We thank you for the gift of life that you have given to us and the gift of eternal life that has come to these people through their baptism. Renew our faith in you now and always, O Lord. Abide with the aged who are alone as they die and protect pregnant mothers and their unborn children. Move us to see your face in them, Lord Jesus, and to help them as we serve you. Mighty King, look with mercy on this land, its government, and all the kingdoms of the world. Relieve us from war, bloodshed, and rebellion. Grant us wisdom as we deal with a changing economy. Provide for the unemployed and their families. Open the hearts of those who prosper to be generous and willing to share. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Coming King and Savior of the world, keep us faithful to the end as we watch and wait for your return. Amen.
This morning we were to receive two new members, Mary Atkins and Eric Atkins. Unfortunately, Eric is ill this morning and therefore his mother has to take care of him. So we will look forward to receiving them into membership at a future time. We continue with the Lord's Supper this morning. Please stand. The Lord be with you. give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who preserves his church to the end of time, when he will come again as king to judge all people and take his own to glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Father, in love you made us the crown of your creation. In mercy you planned our salvation. In grace you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, that he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your son's body and blood in this sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father, and to your Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. of the Lord's Supper is now prepared. We invite all communicant members to come forward to receive Jesus' body and blood. We are honored to have our guests with us today, and we ask that you would please speak with the pastor before communing with us today. God bless our celebration of his sacrament. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given over to death for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus our Savior. Depart in his peace. Amen.
We invite you to please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet you have given us in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the final hymn, It Is Well With My Soul.